Hey guys, in this video I asked the question, can you 3D print with a K40 laser? And surprisingly, the answer is um, yes. For some jobs, you can basically um, use the same principles um, of 3D printing by using a laser cutter. You certainly know how a 3D printer works. Um, most of them use a um, PVC or a plastic filament that gets heated and fed through a uh, nozzle and then apply it layer after layer until you have a finished 3D object uh, with a pretty high um, detail even. But in our case the K4 laser is not capable of printing in that sort of thing. But we can uh, cut out layers and we can glue them together, which leaves us with a 3D object in the end. Maybe not that detailed, but it works for a lot of jobs like making uh, customized boxes that are rounded or round objects in general. The big advantage is we don't need to build fancy 3D models. Um, you could. Um, there are special slicer softwares that uh, cut your 3D objects uh, in slices uh, to be printed uh, bit by bit or cut out bit by bit by your laser cutter. Uh, in my case, I will show you simply how to draw a box um, with a hand grip in a coral laser layer by layer. Um, you may have seen my video about um, how to build the ultimate ghost detector and the, I ended up um, using this principle to build the housing of it. So what we basically do is, let's begin with a simple rectangle here. Oh wait, let's just we'll put on the grid so it might be a little easier for scaling. Uh, by the way, my laser is not hooked up for now. It's just about how I... Um, do this kind of thing in coral laser. Okay, so I have my rectangle here. Um, as usual, we need only the the outlines like this. Now I can go here in this little setup um, where you can round the corners off. Um, I want something which looks pretty rounded. So, well, I will put like 20 in here. Okay. So, um, I will just check on the size here. Uh, let's make this a round number. Let's say it's uh, 15, uh, no, 150 millimeters wide and about 80 millimeters high. Well, well, let's stick with that. Okay, so it basically now looks like an iPhone. But what I want to do now, I want to add a handle here. So something when you have some electronics or, or displays in here, something you can hold in your hand by having this handle here. So I simply draw a, another rectangle here, rectangle. Um, by the way, you can sure, depending on what you want to integrate in there later on, you need to take some measurements. Um, okay. So in my case, for the Ultimate Ghost Detector, I bought myself two very, very cheap, I think $2 um, battery or battery um, packs for um, charging your phone, which has a uh, USB output, as you can see here on the picture. So what I did is I integrated them into the hand grip, so you can just pull them out on the end and you can replace them with a charged one and they will hook up to a USB plug, which was in here pre-installed so you can just push in the battery and it just clicks into the actual plug by pushing it in. So <clears throat> as we want this to be one piece we have to remove this line here. So what I will do is I will get a little bit closer here like this. this is, then we need to convert to curves to make this rectangular the hand grip editable. I use my shape tool. I go on this corner here and I say break apart. So what this does is you see it takes away this line. When I click on this and I press delete it should delete it should delete this line. Well my laptop is a little bit slow for these applications. There we go. Okay, so now I do the same thing for the upper rectangle. So I convert this to curves, I go to the shape tool, I add a point here and I break this apart. So I can, you see, I can 
touch this here. As you may have seen, there was a little rounded corner also. Oh, come on. Also on uh, our hand grip here. Want to remove that as well. Taking this away. You just simply hit delete to delete this. And then I connect them up here. Uh, this was too wide again. Unfortunately, I don't have a mouse for now. <laughs> I'm not at home. But it will work as well like this. Okay, I delete this and I connect this over to this spot here. Well, uh, let's get rid of this little thingy here like this. Okay, good. So we have a basic shape of, let's say, our remote control or handheld remote device. Um, actually, I haven't took the measurements of this size here. I don't want this to be too wide. If not, um, it's not that comfortable to hold in your hand. What you can also do is later on you can sand this down and give it a nice uh, rounded thing uh, form. Okay, so let's say this is our basic shape and in this case this would be like our basic layer. Um, saying this is the back plate of our little apparatus here. So what I do, I will connect, I'm going to combine them. I select both of them by using shift and click on them and then I combine them. Now we have one piece. Okay, so this is our basic layer. What we do now is we go and uh, copy this and paste it again. Then I go here and I go to about, let's say 80%, 80%. Okay, now I will realign this pretty much in the middle. And now the question is what you want to put inside of your housing later on. Uh, do you want to, in well, let's say you have an Arduino or something electronic uh, that's supposed to fit inside. So you'd have to sure take your measurements to know what size your box in general um, must have. And also this will be the inner place or uh, space you have to integrate your uh, Arduino and uh, whatever you want to integrate. So um, according to this you have to size up or scale down um, your uh, remote control. Okay, so let's say this would be okay for my purpose. I want to integrate let's say just a simple Arduino and uh, one or two uh, LEDs and switches. So I can leave this space pretty much um, thick around um, the borders, which is good because it gives you a nice stability later on. Okay, the only thing what we need to do is we need to um, make this here longer and tighter because this is a little bit too wide. So I have to um, break, no, I actually have to uncombine it first usually. No, okay, so I need to break this curve apart and then we have another two objects here so I will make this a little bit longer we'll make this a little bit more narrow let's say like this this is now it's not a hundred percent precise I mean you should take your measurements this that this lines are exactly the same distance to your, the outer border but um, for now, it's just a demonstration, so it will work. Okay, so we have um, this. I need to pull this lines over to match our grip lines, so to speak. And all right, so we have this. Um, let's say when we want to stick in a battery or something in here, this needs to be opened later on. So I need to, um, I need to open this. So again, I go to my shape tool and I add a point here and I break this point apart so I can open up this line here. Oops, there we go. Oh. Didn't I set break apart? Let's 
try this again. No, it does not say... Oh, I selected both, so I dragged them both around. Okay, so I select this one and I select this one and I delete them by pressing delete. And I do the same thing over here. So let me bring down those lines first. As you can see, those are those rounded corners. I get rid of them as well. Select them, delete, and I pull down this line until it joins our outer outlines. Okay, now I select this one and again break apart. You can add a point first or you can just break it apart it doesn't really matter and I pull this over here and I pull this over here okay so which leaves us with this shape so this is basically um, these are the middle layers so we have our base plate which I I actually made a little mistake here I should have copied this one first before opening up the line but I can do this now so I just select the outer outline I copy it and I paste it I drag this over here and I will close this up again this little spot here uh, shape tool always use the shape tool if you want to shape something okay so what we have here is two identical things um, let's say this is the base plate this will be glued onto this later on so this will be our first or our second layer and depending on how thick we want this thing to be later on we just simply go ahead and copy this one let's say let's paste this three times I just put this here for now um, space wise when you print you sure want to make sure to not use um, or not use uh, too much space on your working sheet so what I usually do I take this layer as is I go here I turn this around I flip this on 180 degrees so I can squeeze this in between here like this do the same thing for this one uh, 180 okay now what we need is we need this we need a cover plate so we need this as a cover plate as well so I copy and paste this again like this okay so in here is actually the place where we would engrave our things we make our uh, pre-cut holes for the LEDs say it might be a 10 mil on 10 mil hole um, outlines all right let's copy this one as well so this is just for demonstration so we would have like two holes and we have uh, another one let's make another hole for the for a switch for example nice in the middle and then we can add a little text here like uh, do not push <laughs> something something like this I mean you see what I what I'm talking about right? this is basically it so after this oh what you can do as well sorry before I forget it um, it can be nice when you want to align this later that before you copy and paste those you can add some holes here some very tiny holes somewhere there and there before you copy and paste them again um, so you have holes that, that are exactly on the same spot where you can push a nail through later on which gives you a little bit extra stability and also it aligns the things properly don't do this at the um, at the cover plates because you don't want to have visible holes later on and when you use wood glue you can align them you have enough time to align them properly uh, by the way there's another thing and that was something uh, some of my viewers have asked me um, when I go and save this now let's say we want this saved simply as let's say it's a, uh, it's a hand grip box 
Okay, so this will be a CDR file, right? When I um, save this now, people told me that when they save something and they reopen it, um, the controls for the laser are gone, which in my opinion has a very simple explanation. Um, you know, Coral Draw never really officially licensed something like uh, <laughs> uh, Coral Laser or Laser Laser Draw. This is something some Chinese company might have established for, you know, as an add-on for Coral Draw. So the thing is, when you install this and you go to your program files of uh, Coral Draw, you will see that Coral Draw is still there. It's Coral Draw 12. That is uh, the program that comes with your laser usually and then you install the plugin and it becomes coral laser so what this does is it simply uses coral draw and it writes into the directory some sort of coding to have this little controls here um, enabled or integrated into the software so what simply happens when you when you save this as a cdr file and you double click to open this it will not open coral laser but it will open coral draw which results into not having any controls over your laser so it's not a bug it's just um, when you open this um, you know use right click and uh, open it with the appropriate software in my case as i know um, it's a coral laser file i simply go to my coral laser software and i go to open file and i open it from there so it will open the file in in software in program and uh, you will have your proper um, tools for controlling your laser okay that was it i hope you enjoyed please subscribe to my channel and uh, leave me a comment until then see ya <laughs>